QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Unearned Revenue Estimate Sales Order Receive Payment Forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks Desktop Sample Company file we set up in a prior presentation using the Enterprise version of QuickBooks Desktop so we can practice using the new unearned revenue feature. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Under the view drop down, we have the hide icon bar selected, the open windows list selected, open windows open on the left hand side. Under the company drop down, we have the home page open. Under the reports, we're going to look at the two major financial statement reports under company and financial like we do every time, starting with the balance sheet report. Let's go to the customization, change in the range in from 010127 tab, 123127 tab, fonts and numbers. I'm going to bring that font on up to 14 like we do every time. Okay. Yes. Okay, then. Then we're going to go to the reports drop down again, company and financial. This time the P, the L, the profit, the loss, the income statement, change in that range. This time though, from 010127 tab, 06327 and tab. And then I'm going to look at this on a month by month breakout, not the totals, but on a month by month. And then let's go to the customize reports up top. We're going to customize and let's go to the fonts and numbers changing and bringing that up to 14, okay, yes, and okay. Let's actually go out one more month out to July. So I'm gonna go 073127 at the end date. So we've been running our scenarios and kind of a side-by-side, month-by-month type of breakout. We first started with a scenario where we didn't have any prepayment. Then we ran a scenario where we had a deposit on a large pur purchase like a surfboard in our example. And we had a negative receivable, the old method. Then we ran a scenario with the negative receivable subscription uh, type of model for a magazine or a newspaper or a computer subscription model. And then we used the new feature, first looking at a scenario where we have like the big deposit on a surfboard. Now we're gonna look at the subscription scenario with the new feature, not having a negative receivable, but rather having a positive liability. Let's look at that over here on the home page. So we're imagining now that we sell something like newspapers, or we sell a subscription model for our software, for example. In that case, what happens is we're going to get the money first. We're going to receive the payment before we invoice. So to properly record it, we shouldn't be recording revenue when we get paid, but rather when we do the work. So this is the classic example in most book problems for unearned revenue, in which case uh, we're going to get paid for say like a year's worth of subscription, let's say. And then as the time passes, we should take it out of the liability account, which we're gonna put it in when we get paid and remove it from a liability account to a revenue account. Now, what usually generally happens is we, we're gonna make the estimate. We might not make an estimate in this kind of model of a situation with a subscription, but we'll do the same starting point. We'll make the estimate. We'll lock people into the estimate with the sales order these are non-transaction uh non-financial transaction forms and then from this point instead of creating the invoice which would record revenue we're going to jump on over basically to the receive payment because we're going to get paid 
before we record the invoice because the invoice records the revenue. Now the receive payment uh, would traditionally usually make a negative receivable if we don't have an invoice to tie it out to, but now we're gonna make a positive unearned revenue with the new feature being turned on uh, to allow us to put it into the uh, negative revenue account. And then we can create invoices. Basically, we're thinking like on a monthly basis to write down the unearned revenue and record the sales as they happen. So that's gonna be the process. If I go down to the customer dropdown and we go to the customer center, we ran a similar scenario, which I think was scenario number four here, where we had a similar process, but this was with the negative receivable. So we made an estimate, we made a sales order, and then we collected the payment all up front. That payment created a negative receivable, and then we made invoices to, to apply out to uh, the, the payment as time passes. So internally from this page, this process is pretty nice from a bookkeeping standpoint, although not exactly correct from a financial reporting standpoint, because if I go to my balance sheet, until we pay it off, we're gonna have that negative receivable in the client. Let me show you in a, in a customer report. Reports drop down. We're gonna go into customers and receivables, and let's look at the customer balance detail. So we looked at, let's make it a little bit larger. Let's go just to 12 this time. We're not gonna go crazy to uh, all the way up to 14 with this one because it's kind of a long report or wide report. Let's make it to 12 though. And then, so we had this one here where we had that payment first and then these are being applied to it. So notice it's a negative number, which is not correct because it should be a positive liability, not a, a negative receivable, but from, a, from just a, a sub-ledger perspective, it's quite easy to see in this format. So now we're gonna do the other format where we're gonna create a liability account. So as long as it's negative, it shouldn't be showing up in the customer side or the subledger for accounts receivable, but rather for some other subledger that we will set up. All right, so let's do that. We're gonna to go to the, the home page. First, let's make an estimate. So we'll do our same starting point, the same starting point estimate, and I'm gonna call it then a similar name that we were calling uh, the ones before so we can Remember, it's going to be five. I'm going to call it unearned revenue customer, which is a weird name for a customer. But the point is, I'm trying to remember the scenario that we're running here. So we're going to say QuickBooks, add it, boom, boom. And this is going to be as of 070127, tab, 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 tab. I'm going to make a new item by a similar name. And we're going to make multiple items down here. And this is a method that might be used for a subscription type of model, which will make it easier for make our, to make our invoices monthly. So I'm going to say, let's put this in here. And I'm going to say uh, QuickBooks did, did not find. So I'm going to set it up. And I'm going to make this time a service item. I'm going to imagine it's not an inventory thing that we have to track. It's just going to be a service subscription of some kind. And so I'm going to say this is going to be item uh, unearned revenue. And I'm going to put at the end month one, month one. And I'm going to copy that and we'll just do five months. So I'm going to say, OK, because I think that's what we did before. So I'll put that here and then I'm going to pull out the trusty calculator. And I think we said before it was we were doing 175 is what we've been charging divided by five. That gives us thirty five dollars. So let's charge it out at $35 uh, a month. And then we're gonna say it's gonna go to my new account. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be a five unearned revenue account, which is gonna be a new income account, allowing us or helping us to track what we're doing, setting it up. So it's gonna be the account name. I said five account name, unearned revenue month one. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, save it there it is so i think that's right okay let's save it and then i'm going to do this again and this time i'm going to copy and paste the same thing but month two so i'm going to make a new item for five months so tab same thing same setup service item month number two 35 dollars it's going into five unearned revenue same thing but month number two service item so I'm going to say, okay, this will help us populate it to the purchase order and then to the invoice. So I'm going to say, okay, 
and let's do it again two more times it's tedious but this is tedious i don't like this repetitive no this is good practice tab we're going to say yes and service item down here number three 35 35 dollars number five number five tab and we'll save that one and then we'll do it ultra vase dos more times two more times dos mas <laughs> we're gonna say yes and then tab and then down here this is gonna be 35 number five and then one more time one more time number five copy that i'm gonna copy that bam yes and service number five 35 and number five okay so there we have it and let's save it so so now it's going to add up to that total of 188.56 which i think is the total we've been working with with our prior practice problem models but now it's broken out on a month by month uh breakout so i'm going to say all right this isn't going to record anything so what's this going to do from a from a journal entry standpoint nothing it's just like our other transaction our prior practice problems over here nothing's happening i'm going to try to get a full screen all right so nothing's happening thus far let's save it and close it we can check it out in my customer balance not there in the customer center where my customers hang out they're over here i have every all dates selected and there's my estimate has been made so the next thing that we would do we had our we had our estimate we're going to go to the sales order you would only have a sales order here if you were uh in, like in the enterprise version generally and if you didn't have a sales order you, you would go basically from the estimate possibly if you're collecting the deposit to the received payment but we're going to make the sales order also an internal document so i'm going to go to the customer center and i would go into the estimate and say okay they finalized that one so let's make a sales order from it and it says the estimate has been copied to the sales order great mui b to the n b n and so there it is let's make this as of 0702027 0702027 and everything's been pulled in here once again nothing's happening from a journal entry standpoint what's happening nada nothing it's just basically an internal documentation and so we're gonna go uh so let's save it and close it and so now we've got the sales order and the estimate so sales order and estimate so if i go to my home page sales order estimate we don't have to go up to get inventory we don't have any inventory instead we're going to get the payment we could record an invoice but if we did so then we would be recording we would be recording the revenue at this point when we received it but we haven't actually delivered the software or the newspaper or the magazine or whatever we're supposed to give them therefore we're going to go to this receive payment and this usually creates a negative receivable like we saw in the last scenario but this time we turned on the preferences to make it uh, do the new the new thing unearned revenue positive liability account how did we do that edit drop down preferences preferences down here and then we went into the payments and company preferences if you don't have this thing over here then you might not have access to the prepayments but it should be here if you have access to it and then it would say receive customer prepayments on sales order prepayment settings let's go into the prepayment settings we turned it on with this button record prepayment as a liability we selected the liability account i'd like to select a different liability account this time because i'm going to call it unearned revenue with this scenario as opposed to customer deposit because that's usually the terminology you do with a subscription model so i'm going to say new one let's call it unearned revenue you didn't earn that revenue you didn't earn that revenue save it save it okay and then we're going to say uh okay and then we can then uh go back to our uh our customer center customer center and i can make i usually would make it from the sales order go into the receive payment so we're in the sales order we're going to go to the receive payments and if you didn't have it turned on already then and you had access to that feature quickbooks might ask you to turn on the feature because it's saying hey you're doing something funny you're going out of order 
So you won't be able to make the change to this prepayment once you apply it to an invoice. So we have to be careful. We might be able to still delete it, but we can't change it once we do it. So we're going to be careful. Be careful. It looks like the same payment form, which usually decreases accounts receivable, but it's different because it says prepayment, which means it's not going to decrease the accounts receivable, but rather it's going to be increase in the liability that we assigned, in this case, that being unearned revenue. Down here, you usually have invoices that we're going to apply the payment to, but this time we don't have an invoice because we didn't make the invoice yet because we haven't earned the revenue yet, but it still has something down here because it's pulling in the sales order. That's the new thing. That's how QuickBooks is tying this stuff together. So let's say that we're going to be collecting then uh, the whole the whole thing and how much was it uh, 180 188.56 because it's a subscription model so we're going to get this up front right here right now that's when we're going to get it and we're going to say this is going to happen on uh 0703.27, and this is clicked off down here so what's this going to do from a journal entry standpoint let's let's check it out we're going to say from a journal entry standpoint cash is going to go up it's going to go into unearned revenue but we're just going to call it cash here for the amount of how much was it it was uh with the sales tax included 188.56 so let's wait this needs to go over here cash 188.56 so this is the uh receive re receive prepayment I'm going to try to call it something different because this is the receive payment form, but you have this prepayment little button over there that makes it different because it's not going to increase the accounts receivable, but the liability instead, the liability is now going to be called, let's just change the name. It's not going to be customer deposit. We're going to call it unearned revenue. You're not entitled to that revenue yet. You think it's you think you're entitled to it, but no, you didn't do you haven't done the work. You haven't done the work to and be entitled to that revenue. Okay? So we're gonna put it in here into a liability account until you do until you do have have done what you need to do to bring it on down from unearned revenue into the income. We do that with the invoice. So if I go back on over here, let's record it on this side. I can't do it because I can't see the button. So I'm gonna say Let's bring the sides of the screen down to 125 and then I can see the button, save it and close it. And hopefully I did that right because you can't change it. It said, remember, and then I'll make it super sized again and close it out. And so there we have it in the internal documentation. And let's see what happens over here. We're going to go then to the balance sheet. And it went into unearned revenue or undeposited funds. So I get those confused sometimes because they have the un in front of them. But there it is, undeposited funds. And the other side did not go into a negative receivable, but rather should be going into a liability account, which we are now calling unearned revenue. Unearned revenue. So there we have it. So that looks MUI B to the end. If I double click on that, we get into our payment. Closing that out looks good. So that's the differentiating factor here. So last time it went into the negative receivable. Now, if I look at that from a reporting standpoint, it actually is a little bit more confusing because because usually when I'm looking at my customers, if I want to look at the reports, I would look at a sub ledger for accounts receivable like we did over here. If I go to my my customer balance information, remember, this is the, the similar scenario we did with a negative receivable before where, where we would see the the negative amount and then the payments apply to it when i look at this new one it's not here it's not here at all but we have another sub ledger for the open prepayments so if i go to the customer drop down and we go to the customers and receivables we've got this customer prepayment uh report boom and there it is right there so we have this added report which makes it a little bit more confusing but you know but on the plus side it's recording it properly uh, from a financial reporting perspective. Internally, if I go to the customer balance or the customer center, it looks pretty much the same internally. So if I'm trying to manage this and just manage it from an internal perspective, which you would normally do over here from the bookkeeping side of things, it looks pretty much the same, right? We made the estimate 
we did the sales order, and now we have the prepayment. Whereas this scenario, we did the similar process. We had the estimate, we had the sales order, and we had the payment. And the only difference is that this payment now is now posting, it was posting to negative accounts receivable, now it's posting to the unearned revenue. But like on a bookkeeping side, I might not even be looking at the reports, right? I'm kind of looking in here to just tr to see what's happening. And from that perspective, these two things are, are running the same, uh, pretty much the same process thus far. Now, the next step does add a little bit more complexity. So the, the pros here being that thus far, it looks pretty, this, the process is pretty much the same. And the benefit is that now when I look at my reports, I don't have to do an adjusting journal entry for those negative receivables at the end of the month for external reporting. I, I already have it posted properly into a liability account as should, should be the case. Uh, that's great. Uh, from the cons perspective, it's it's a little bit more confusing when I look at the reports because now I have two sub ledgers and I have to look at a liability account to see the sub ledgers and I'm adding an, a level of complexity where people can mess things up because they might post something to unearned revenue instead of to revenue or something. I have another account that could cause uh, people problems and I have two kind of forms that look like a receive payment form that are basically different. One of the receive payment forms being for a deposit versus the other receive payment form that can cause a little bit of confusion. And then when I, when we finish this off, they're going to have to pull in this amount that's in, that's in the, the unearned revenue. Uh, where did it go? They're going to have to pull that in and net it against the, the receivable, which is going to cause a journal entry and another clearing account. So it does add some levels of complexity uh, to, to, to the system, but it works pretty well. I mean, there's no way to get, kind of get around that. I'm not trying to say this, but that's, you know, the kind of the pros and cons. So the prior method still, it might be appropriate for basically smaller companies or companies that are, are comfortable doing that adjusting entry at the end of the period. It still works pretty good. The new method though is, is looking pretty similar from a bookkeeping standpoint, but it has a couple of those things that do add a bit more complexity just from the internal bookkeeping side of things. So we'll continue on and finish this out uh, next time.